as long as I can get the mic in the right place. Are we good, you think? Yeah. yeah? Cool. All right, time for the notes. And I apologize in advance if I like hit the microphone and you know like knock some teeth out, but it'll just add to the evening, so it'll be good. All right, cool. So, okay, okay, gather myself. I have some good news. We're almost done. And I have some better news. We're not done yet. We still have a bit of time left. I know, that might not seem like better news. We've been here for years. Isn't it time to be done with cramming and group projects and essays and exams? Yeah, maybe. This, right now, is the sweetest part of our university career. We're close enough to the end that we can look forward to being done, but we're not quite done yet. We still have a chance to do all those things that we've been meaning to do, like paint the cannon, we still have a few weeks left, or we could still go downtown to the farmer's market, because, you know, a few Saturdays till we all leave Guelph. And while we are mostly done and apt to say things like, I wish I'd studied more, or I wish I'd gone to more parties, it's also true that our time's not up yet. We can still do these things, and we can avoid creating regret. Speaking of regret, there are a lot of things about this campus that we're going to miss, like Bob's dogs and the bake sales that supplement our lunches almost every day. <laughs> and we might miss the male-female ratio for some of us, but other of us, <laughs> it's a good thing to leave behind. So some things we won't miss include Weingard Walk and that, all those salt stains that get all over your pants and boots. We can say goodbye to those. And there's also that library buzzer. You know what that, you remember that? So you're maybe in the library at 1 a.m. and you're hunched over a desk sleeping really uncomfortably and then you're woken up to this really annoying sound. And even if you expect it, that really aggravating fire alarm sound, and it gives you an adrenaline rush, well, it's still pretty brutal. And in case you don't remember what that sounds like, I've brought it here tonight. And that's from about a week ago. <laughs> so we can look forward to graduating, because we're leaving that sound behind, and we probably won't hear it ever again. We've done a lot in these past few years. We've learned to balance a bunch of facets of our lives, mixing academic time with earning money, and playing intramurals, being involved with clubs. We've learned about prioritizing. We got bottled water out of the bullring. And we've learned to wind our toy and not care about looking ridiculous. We lived with people who became our friends, and we've lived with others whose friendship was strained by living together. So we've learned about compromise and conflict management. I, like you, have learned that I'm capable of accomplishing things I never thought possible, like those frantically completed assignments that you actually somehow did okay on. You've learned you can do those sort of things, like completing an assignment that's thousands of words long in one night instead of in two weeks. This learning, for me, continued outside of university. In 2010, I decided to participate in a walking pilgrimage, and we walked from Guelph to Midland. And so I love to be barefoot. Maybe you can tell the lack of shoes here. So my goal was to alternate walking barefoot one day and then wear shoes the next day, because walking seven days, about 25 kilometers a day, without shoes is <laughs> a little stupid. Um, so I really didn't think I could, and neither did my friends. So I started out barefoot, and then on the second morning, I got out of my tent, and my feet were really sore, but not quite as bad as I was expecting. So I tried a second day barefoot, and then a third day, and then a fourth. And then despite the burning asphalt and those splinters, well, I didn't put shoes on, because really, how can you opt for barefoot when you're telling, you're hearing from people that you're inspiring them by being barefoot. Like, I just couldn't put shoes on. So I literally took it one day at a time, one step at a time. I didn't think I could walk that far barefoot, but I also didn't think I couldn't. I just decided to try it. So I took care of my feet, and I persevered, and I wound up with an accomplishment that I still have a hard time believing. So from this pilgrimage, I learned the importance of leniency in a plan. 
If I'd had a hard set plan about wearing footwear, then it would have been really easy for me to be like, hey, I'm gonna wear shoes this day and then follow the plan and just like when you follow a schedule. So I didn't go on autopilot though. And we've all heard the phrase, if you plan to fail, sorry, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And that's true enough in a lot of respects. But I think we overplan sometimes. If you aim for a particular goal, then you accomplish it, and that's it. But if we're open to a change of plans, and if we leave the goal a little open-ended, then we can accomplish things that we once thought were impossible. So don't limit your expectations. When talking to a friend a few months ago, she said, whoa, you're graduating this year? That's so exciting. And my response was, yeah. I hadn't really stopped to think about what graduation meant. Graduating university is something that thousands of people have done before us, and an increasing number of people are going to do after us. It's just another step of the process that we're expected to partake in. Whoop-de-doo, that's what I was thinking. And then I thought about it more. We should remember that there's a number of students who didn't get to this point. The students who had to pause their formal education because of financial or other reasons, or you know, some people flunk out. We're really fortunate to have reached this point. This point, we're here tonight. Holy moly. <laughs> and while it is expected of us to graduate rather than to quit or to flunk out, gosh darn it, we did it. We didn't have to do this. We chose to stay. And we fought through hours of monotonous or hard to understand lectures. <laughs> we fought the battle of our eyes drifting closed and our chins drifting towards our chests. We persevered and we handed our assignments in, in varying degrees of timeliness and quality. We suffered through weeks of craft dinner and processed foods, because it's all we had and the grocery store was too far away or we didn't have enough money for food. We had some unforgettable, or forgettable, nights out downtown. We stressed about exams. We procrastinated. We sat at our computers, checking WebAdvisor, stalking course openings. We received fall semester grades right before Christmas. <laughs> We've lost sleep, gained friends, spent a heck of a lot of money, and earned this degree. And that is something to be proud of. That is something to be so, so excited about. Just as the next stage of our lives is exciting. We're free. We're free to do what we want, when we want. There's no more printing out those class schedule grids and finding the right room at the right time, doing assignments or research just because instructors tell us to. The message of our lives for the past many years has been something like, do what you want, when you want, so long as you get your homework done and you receive appropriate grades. Our lives have been stress and deadlines and being told what to do. The message of our lives has been dictated to us. But now, our lives have the opportunity to change and widen and veer off into other continents if we want. We really can shape our lives into whatever message we want. Of course, this message has already been developing and changing over the past few years. Been in different clubs, talked to different people. We change. But from here, we have the chance to pull together all of these threads of our lives. And we can ditch the ones that don't fit our ideal pattern and then add new ones. Graduation is both a continuation and a fresh start. I know, it's terrifying. <laughs> We've had this structure of school for most of our lives, and suddenly we'll be without it, or it'll change significantly as we pursue a graduate degree. And on top of that, we're thousands of dollars in debt. But now is not the time to worry about it. If you get caught up in thinking about this now, you'll miss my speech. <laughs> but don't worry, it's over in a few minutes. More importantly, as Max Lucado said, don't start tackling tomorrow's problems until tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow's strength yet. You simply have enough for today. So stay in the moment. Things will work out. 
But keep in mind that there probably is an exam happening next week, and that's still a problem for today. So uh, it's worth working on now and not leaving till tomorrow. <laughs> You're probably familiar with that question, what are we gonna do after we graduate? As pretty much everyone seems to ask you that once they find out that you're in university. Sometimes it seems that people expect us to know what to do. And for a lot of people, yeah, they're gonna become a vet, they're gonna become a teacher, they're gonna go get a master's degree. They know what they wanna do, they know what they're going to do. But for a number of us, we're not entirely sure where we want to go next. We don't have a clear outline of our lives. We don't yet know what message our lives will take on. And sometimes we think we do, but we really don't. I remember being in high school, being asked, what are you doing after graduation? Or what university are you going to? As my graduating class lived with the expectation that if you had good grades, you were to go to university. Because that's the ticket to success in the real world, isn't it? In 2006, I proudly answered this question with, I'm going to Guelph for environmental engineering. And I stand before you now, two months away from receiving my BA in English. <laughs> and uh, I stand before you now without much of an answer of what I'm gonna do after I graduate. But it's funny, because now when I respond to the question and I say, I'm gonna go traveling, rather than saying, I don't know what I'm doing after university, then the questioners who ask me that they nod wisely, and they comment on how that's a really good idea to travel while I can. And it'll broaden my horizons, and I'll learn a lot. So I personally don't feel like going traveling is a much better answer than, I have no idea. But uh, answering with traveling does tend to reduce the amount of advice they try to give me. <laughs> when I say going traveling, I managed to avoid hearing about the minimal amount of teaching jobs that are available right now, because of course, with an English degree, I'm supposed to become a teacher. Isn't that the way it goes? So if you're looking for a good response to the what are you doing after graduation question, I recommend saying traveling, because honestly, it's true. Even if you just travel to the grocery store, you're traveling. <laughs> also, if you go in the route of volunteering in exchange for room and board, then you get cheaper travel and you get to learn things. So possibly something to look into. But I mentioned the connection betwixt the high school graduation question and the university graduation question because I had a strong answer of what I was gonna do after high school. I was planning to become an engineer and I really thought I had a plan. And then my original plan changed, and I changed, in case you can't tell. <laughs> so it's worth remembering that even if you have the most comprehensive plan, it could change, either by your doing or by circumstances beyond your control. Finally, as Daniel Levin said, it's only when you become empty that you can be filled with something greater. It's only when you have time or make time that you can try something new. If you think you know everything, you won't learn anything. So make sure there's space for new things and that you're not filled with day-to-day -day ordinary. Leave room for something extraordinary. <laughs>